Hi guys, so this video is going to look at the poem Tuft of Flowers by Robert Frost. Alright, so before we start looking at the poem, just think about the title of the poem. So the poem is called The Tuft of Flowers. Alright, so based on the title, what themes might you expect to see coming up in this poem? Alright, now this video is going to go through trying to help you understand the language and the storyline of the poem. We'll connect some of the themes with some of the information we might know about Frost's life. We're going to examine the language of the poem in depth and then try and explore some deeper meanings behind the poem. So if we go back to the initial question, the idea of tuft of flowers. When we hear about flowers we're most likely going to be thinking about nature, okay? we might be thinking about romance, right? but the, the idea of a tuft could also seem quite harsh. Right, so it's maybe a slight conflict within those words, a tuft of flowers. Maybe it's not a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Maybe it is something a bit more uh, outside in nature and less, uh, less, hu less human interaction to make it seem as beautiful as possible. All right, so we're going to go into the poem and look, read through the poem to start off, to, off with. So the tuft of flowers. I went to turn the grass once after one who mowed it in the dew before the sun. The dew was gone that made his blade so keen before I came to view the leveled scene. I looked for him behind an aisle of trees. I listened for his whetstone on the breeze. But he had gone his way, the grass all mown, and I must be, as he had been, alone. As all must be, I said within my heart, whether they work together or apart. But as I said it, swifter passed me by, a noiseless wing, a wildered butterfly. Seeking with memories grown dim or night, some resting flower of yesterday's delight. And once I marked his flight go round and round, as where some flower, flower lay withering on the ground. And then he flew as far as I could see, and then on tremulous wing came back to me. I thought of questions that have no reply, and would have turned to toss the, would have turned to toss the grass to dry. But he turned first and led my eye to look at a tall tuft of flowers beside a brook. A leaping tongue of bloom the sit had spared, beside a reedy brook the sit had bared. I left my place to know them by their name, finding them butterfly weed when I came. The more in the Jew had loved them thus, by leaving them to flourish not for us, nor yet to draw one thought of ours to him, but from sheer morning gladness at the brim. The butterfly and I had lit upon, nevertheless a, me a message from the dawn. That made me hear the wakening birds round, and hear his long sit whispering to the ground, and feel a spirit kindred to my, mine own, so that henceforth I worked no more alone. But glad with him I worked as with, he, with his aid, and weary sought at noon with him to shade. And dreaming as it were held brotherly speech, were one whose thought I had not hoped to reach. Men worked together, I told him from the heart, whether they worked together or apart. Okay, so I'm going to just move on. There's a few questions from our first reading of that poem. I want you to think, what is the setting of the poem? Where does the poem actually take place? At what point does Frost notice and begin to concentrate on the butterflies? Can you find that line within the poem? What does the butterfly help Frost to notice? And what does the butterfly lead, his, lead him to noticing? And in line 39, held brotherly speech. To whom is he speaking? Is there another person there? Okay, so I'm going to flick back onto the poem here, alright, I want you to pause the video here and spend, you know, five, six minutes. You need to be really familiar with these poems in order to get an, a good analysis, good deep analysis of them. So spend five, six minutes, read through the poem a few times and see if you can answer those four or five questions. Okay, so the setting of the poem is in a, it's, it's rural obviously, and basically frost is just in a field where the grass has already been cut. Now this is somewhere that people sometimes get confused. Okay, we're going back quite a long time, and the grass has been cut by a man, by a man who came in the morning before frost with his sit. And now what frost is doing is he's coming and he is turning over the uh, grass that's lying on the ground. The reason for this is to kind of help it dry out properly so it doesn't uh, mold with the wetness of the dew that would be on it from when it was cut. Okay, so his frost job here is not cutting the grass, he's turning the grass. 
uh, at the point where he notices the um, butterfly is when he says a wildered butterfly. Okay. What does the butterfly? The butterfly helps him to notice a tuft of flowers over by the brook, and there's a, so there's a small group of flowers where the, per, the person who was mowing, the man who was mowing in the, mor in the morning, has clearly decided not to destroy these flowers. Okay, it's very obvious to Frost. Everything seems to be mowing around him. He has specifically decided that he's not going to cut these flowers. Okay, and Frost, that's a very important point because Frost feels a connection to him because he sees this man appreciate the beauty of the nature in these flowers. Okay, so we're going to come back to that in a minute. It's very, very important to notice that the man who was mowing the lawn consciously decided, purposely made the decision not to cut this group of flowers down. Okay, and this held brotherly speech. Frost is not speaking to anyone directly. What he's doing is he's taking a rest and he's speaking as if this mower was there. Okay? He feels a connection with this man who is mowing and he feels that they are being, they're working together even though he's not there with the man. Okay? He just feels a connection to him. Okay? So it's kind of a spiritual conversation with the man who was, cutting, who was mowing the grass early in the morning. Okay, so I'm going to break this down. Now the poem is broken up into uh, into couplets, okay? Now we're not going to go through a couplet by couplet because we'll be here for a very long time doing that. So we're going to break it down just into sections. The first section is lines 1 to 10. So, I went to turn the grass once after one, who mowed it in the dew before the sun. The dew was gone that made his blade so keen before I came to view the level scene. I looked for him behind an aisle of trees, I listened for his whetstone on the breeze. But he had gone his way, the grass all mown, and I must be as he had been, alone. As all must be, I said within my heart, whether they work together or, or apart. So again, I would suggest that you pause the video here and there's a few little questions down at the bottom of the display there uh, that you should try to answer yourselves. And it's more important, it's more useful for you to come to your own opinions and your own ideas about the poem rather than just waiting for me to give you the ideas you think about it first and then we'll, we'll go into deeper discussion about it. All right, so the question is, how would you describe the tone of the poem from the opening 10 lines? What themes stand out for you so far? Yeah, I should say so far, not too far. Uh, and in terms of the structure of the poem, is there anything you have noticed? And I've already pointed that out to you, which is that it is written in couplets. So I'll pause here. Alright, so question one, how would you describe the tone of the poem? The tone seems quite downhearted, okay, and we can get that from the word alone, okay. He is looking for companionship but can't find it. So I look for him behind an aisle of trees. I listen for his whetstone on the breeze. Right, he's trying to find a connection, to find someone to spend his time with, but he can't actually find this person yet. Okay, so it's a sense of loneliness and a sense of um, sadness within the first and downheartedness at the start of the poem. Right, the themes that would stand out is that idea of loneliness um, and the idea of nature. Okay, that he's out in nature and he's working. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind as well. So we're going to go into our annotations straight away. So the poet sets the scene in this first couplet. Okay, he's going out to work in a field inspired by Frost's time working as a farmer. So we know that Frost has spent quite a lot of his young life working in agriculture in the rural areas. Okay, and this is where he got inspired um, for you know with this kind of work that he has knowledge of it. Okay, and we know he has a great love of nature as well. All right, now we, he tells us that somebody has already been, so I've already pointed this out to you, somebody has been working in the field earlier in the morning, they have mowed the grass, he is now going to turn the grass. Okay? There is very much a conversational, colloquial sense to his language. Now, this is one of Frost's most, um, one of the most iconic aspects of Frost's poetry is that he uses this colloquial uh, rural American language throughout his poems. He is speaking to us as if we are a close confidant. Right? Uh, we notice the afternoon, so we can go down to that green box. It's the afternoon when Frost has arrived, so he is not the first person to be working there. Someone was working earlier. Right? Frost looks around to see if the other person is still there, but he can't find any sign of that person. Okay, the other person has already moved on, finished his work. Right? So, you can see imagery coming across here of Frost being very much alone. He is looking for something, you know, it's a, not quite a desperation, but a, um, how would you say, a desire to have company. 
right? So we very much feel this kind of silence in the poem, right? He listened for the whetstone on the breeze, okay? There's a bit of sibilance going on in there, he listened for the whetstone, right? And that's adding to the aspect of silence. So the Isle of, three, uh, Isle of Trees listened for his whetstone, okay? A lot of sibilance going on in that third couplet, right? And that is going to add to the sense of calmness, stillness, and the loneliness and the silence that he is experiencing and experiencing at the time. Okay. Um, he then focuses from this. He focuses on the idea that he is now alone. Reflects on the idea. So Floss is a very contemplative person. He thinks a lot, and he is reflecting on this idea that even if we're with someone, are we not still alone, really, within ourselves? Okay, even when we're working closely at the same task, we are inherently always by ourselves. We can never actually really be connected to someone. Okay, so that is the downhearted message coming through at the start. He has quite a you know, somber look at life, okay, and his reflections are not the most upbeat. He's very much feeling alone in the world in this poem. Now if we move on to the next 16 lines. But as I said it, swifter pass me by, a noiseless wing, a wildered butterfly, seeking with memories going dim or night, some resting flower of yesterday's light. And once I marked his flight go round and round, as where some flower lay withering on the ground. And then he flew as far as I could see, and then on tremulous wing came back to me. I thought of questions that have no reply, and would have turned to toss the grass to dry. But he turned first and led my eye to look, at a tall tuft of flowers beside a brook. A leaping tongue of bloom to sit its bared, beside a reedy brook to sit it bared. I left my place to know them by their name, finding them butterfly weed when I came. Alright, so again I'm going to suggest pause here, read through those 16 lines again yourselves, okay, and try and come up with answers to those two questions down the bottom. So I thought of questions that have no reply, to whom would these questions have been addressed? Okay, what does this suggest about the poet's outlook and tone of the poem? And how has the presence of the butterfly affected the poet? So pause now. Okay, so the questions he may be asking, okay, I thought of questions that have no reply. Now, this may be him highlighting the fact that he is alone once again, okay, and that there is no one there to answer his questions, okay, it may be symbolic of the fact that he feels quite alone in the world, right, and that the questions he has to ask do not have an answer, okay, this may be a more symbolic of his view of life, that the questions he has about life cannot be answered by anyone. Okay. Perhaps the great questions that we all have about life do not actually have answers. Okay, so there's a lot of contemplation going on here, a lot of philosophical ideas. Of maybe he's thinking about a deeper meaning of life here. Okay, uh, it suggests that his outlook and the tone of the poem. He is still at this stage looking for someone to speak to. Okay, but he's also beginning to maybe accept the fact that he is somewhat alone. Okay, and maybe there is. It's, you know, we, it becomes a little bit more upbeat here in that we have the movement of the butterfly, the image of the butterfly being a bright, colourful image, okay, and that, that is, um, how do you say it, uh, the will of the butterfly is bringing a bit of action into, and a bit of life into the um, story. However, the image of the butterfly is also regularly an image that's connected with death, so there is the idea here of the butterfly, you know, is when the butterfly gives him an insight into the meaning of life, is that the inevitability of death that allows him to see that insight. Okay? Uh, so the presence of the butterfly has given him action, okay, which distracted him from his work. And that's very important here. He says that he would have turned to toss the grass to dry, but he is not going to do that at the moment. He is more in, in um, in tune with the butterfly, he wants to be at one with nature, and he wants to experience the nature of the poem. Okay, so he's willing to leave his work for a moment. Okay, you know, not to be his industrious self because he is a hard worker. We'll see in later poems, and especially the Bible, Bible, he's very into the idea of hard work, providing for yourself. But here he is, um, the presence of the butterfly is distracting him from that, and he's willing to accept that distraction. Okay, so a few different things going on here. So as he's beginning to work he's and is thinking, he notices the butterfly flutter by him. He comments that the butterfly seems wildered. Yeah, that's just a short 
Lovecraft term for bewildered or confused, and as such, it personifies the creature which later ties into the relationship he seems to establish with it. So he's giving a, a human qualities to butterflies, personifying it, okay, by making it bewildered, you know, giving us the idea of confusion, making it a more cognizant being. Uh, the butterfly, not knowing what has happened in the field, is looking for flowers from the day before. The poet places his own ideas on the creature. So we all know that butterflies don't live very long. The idea that the butterfly will be coming back and looking for a flower that's seen before and is having you know, a routine or something in its day is you know, a bit out there. It's more that perhaps this is what Frost is looking for. So he's putting his own ideas, his own view of the world into the butterfly. So he's allowing the butterfly you know, to metaphorically symbolically express his own views. Okay? Uh, the butterfly sees a dead flower which further confuses it. The frost watches as it flies round and round. The word tremulous suggests the butterfly is trembling due to confusion of the situation, comes back and forth in search, uh, in search of a flower. Okay, so he is the butterfly is very very confused by the situation, by the loss of the flowers, the loss of beauty. Okay, maybe this is reflective of what Frost is feeling confused about life as well. Uh, Frost is about to go back to work, but then the butterfly leads his eyes to a tuft of flowers, which a person that morning had not cut down. Okay, so there's a lot coming in here, possibly in terms of Frost's mental health. So we know that Frost throughout his life suffered from depression. Indeed, a number of members of his family also suffered from depression. Now, what he's trying to point out here, possibly, is that the cutting of the grass and the cutting of the flowers from yesterday is symbolic of his view of the world as a depressed person. He cannot see the beauty from yesterday anymore. It has been destroyed by the man who is mowing it. However, when he finds this one piece of beauty, this tuft of flowers, and he notices that someone else has cared about the beauty of the world and wanted to help something prosper and this act of kindness that this mower has not destroyed the tuft of flowers, this allows Frost to see the beauty of the world around him and he can get hope from this image that someone else out there cares about the world and is kind. So as he goes to look at the flowers, it shows his knowledge of nature of the area, telling us what they are called, so this is linking back then to his life as well and his knowledge of um, agriculture, of uh, the flora of the area. Okay, moving on, lines 27 to 42. The more in the Jew had loved them thus, by leaving them to flourish, not for us, nor yet to draw one thought of ours to him, but from sheer morning gladness at the brim. The butterfly and I had lit upon, nevertheless a message from the dawn, that made me hear the waking birds, wakening birds around, and hear his long sit whispering to the ground, and feel a spirit kindred to my own, so that henceforth, henceforth I worked no more alone. But glad with him I worked as with his aid, and weary sought at noon with him the shade. And dreaming, as it were, held brotherly speech, with one whose thought I had not hoped to reach. Men work together, I told him from the heart, whether they work together or apart. Alright, so once again, I'm going to tell you to pause here. Right, there is a number of lines for you to look at here. And again, concentrate on those questions down at the bottom. So three questions. How has the poet's outlook advanced or changed from lines 9 to 10 up to lines 41 to 42? What connection can we draw between his emotions, emotions in this poem and what we know of the poet's life? And I know a number of these have already discussed with you. And why do you think a sense of connection with the mower may be important to Frost? Why is it important to him that if he has a connection to someone else in the world, to someone that he doesn't actually know that he's probably not going to need why is that connection so important to Frost. Alright, so pause here. Okay, so first question, okay, we want to look at lines 41 to 42, and this is where he tell the last final lines, oh men work together, I told him from the heart, whether they work together or apart. Okay, I want you to compare that to lines 9 and 10. Lines 9 and 10 is the first time that he spoke. What he said in lines 9 to 10 is, All must be, I said within my heart. As all must be, sorry, as all must be, I said within my heart, whether they work together or apart. So in lines 9 to 10, he's saying that everyone is alone, whether they work with someone or not. 
However, down here at the end, he's saying that everyone's actually working together, whether they work together or apart. So what we're seeing is an entirely, totally, a total shift in his view of the world. Whereas in nine and nine and ten, he'd seem desperately alone. Here, he seems very to feel very much connected with people. Right? So a huge, huge change. In entire, it's a 180 turnaround here. Okay. Kind of feeling, feeling totally alone no matter what happens he's always going to feel alone now he's seeing that there is connection and beauty in the world and people are similar and kind to each other uh, what connections do we draw between emotions in the poem and what we know of his life and that is this idea of the depression that he suffers from and indeed the depression that his family members suffer from that he can see he, he's going through a very dark period at the beginning of the poem however being out in nature seeing an act of kindness seeing something beautiful is allowing sorry allowing him to um, appreciate the beauty of the world again, right? And that is where the importance of connection with the mower is, is that he doesn't feel alone in the world. It's very, very important for humans to feel connection with people, okay? To feel that there's someone else who's going through a similar experience. And that's what the mower is offering to Frost here. So, really quickly to go through some of these notes, right? We're told that the mower did not leave the flowers for others to enjoy. It was not to make them think about him. So it's not done for, lay, for, uh, for fame or legacy or even for kindness. It's simply because of his joy of his life. His gladness is that he sees something beautiful and he just decides to leave it. Okay? So it's just a simple joy and gladness of life. That's all that, these, that they're representing. So Frost, that joy and gladness lifts him into a better spirit. So. Uh, the poet feels connection and that the flowers are acting as a message. We feel like the message, the connection from the mower, from someone else out there, or even from the world itself, is reaching out to him and giving him this symbol of kindness and symbol of hope. He, em he can empathise with the man who worked there before him and they can share the experience so he no longer feels alone. So because of this, as like I said, he feels no more, no more alone. Okay. Um, but that he's working with somebody and a spirit kindred, so kindred spirit, someone who's close to him, someone who sees the world in the same way as he does. This feeling makes his work seem easier. Okay? He's now part of a team and a community, okay? so he doesn't mind the work anymore. And that work could be symbolic of his life, that life seems easier, because life is part, he's part of the community in life. And this leads to the realisation at the end of the poem that we're never alone, and that even when we are working by ourselves, even when we're, you know, isolated, okay, which <laughs> makes us proud, hadn't thought of this before, we're very apt to the moment, to this moment when we're all stuck inside, uh, isolated because of the, because of the, the coronavirus. Uh, very much, you know, a similar idea here. You know, even though we're not, even though we're alone, there is still a connection. We're all still experiencing things in a similar way, and there is that connection, and that community spirit, and that you know, worldly community, and that is what is lifting Frost out of his depression. Okay, so, some features of the language. Personification of the butterfly emphasizes Frost's deep sense of connection with nature. Okay? Uh, the work in the poem may metaphorically represent Frost's work as a poet. So we said it could represent his life, it could also represent his work as a poet and draw on his feelings of connection with poets of the past. Okay, so this is very much um, a more symbolic view of the poem is that, you know, when he sees this mower, is the mower a, say, a, a poet from the past? A, if we take, for example, maybe the Romantics, and they talked about the beauty of nature. That Frost now can look back at what they see and see their view and appreciate their view and appreciate the universality of the beauty of nature, and the timelessness of that feeling. I feel that even though in the modern world nature may not be appreciated in the same way, he feels a connection with those people in the early 1800s who felt that beauty of nature as well. Okay, so is he that he is feeling a connection with the older poets of the past? Okay, and that all poetry, all literature are working to the same end. Uh, line 7, the word but draws our attention, the feeling of isolation which the poet is experiencing. Line 8, before the word alone has the effect of causing a pause and so the, the uh, dash before the word alone makes this pause, makes the word stand out. There's also a sense of loneliness emphasized by the assonance of the moan and alone. Okay, the extended own sound, and that own is very much a sound, a hollow kind of sound, and it represents his loneliness. Line 9 and 10, there's definitely a sense of resignation that all mankind must be alone. Okay, must be. The word must. 
but it's not something he's choosing, but he is so he's a victim of possibly. And that's how he's feeling at the start of the poem. Uh, as we move on, line 11 starts with the word but again, showing a change in the mood of the poet, so he's less, uh, he's made less uh, melancholic by the appearance of butterflies, which is very poorly phrased in the writing there. Um, he's feeling less melancholy, he's feeling more upbeat now because of the appearance of butterfly. The butterfly is an ancient Greek symbol of the soul. Uh, we haven't mentioned this earlier. It represents uh, Frost's sense of confusion in his life and his work. He's distracted by the unanswerable questions in life and is unable to settle into his work until he finds tough flowers. Okay, so this butterfly flying around could be the soul of Frost and he feels that he is flying around because he is unconnected and he doesn't know where to go so he's flying round and round but when he sees the tough flowers that grounds him that brings his work back to life and uh, allows him to focus. The sound of the sit whispering to the ground shows great use of senses, shows use of senses, okay, also with the sibilance of the sit and the whispering, right? uh, and represents the whispering here from the great poets of the past, so reflecting back to that idea. Uh, the use of rhyming couplets throughout the poem reflects the sense of togetherness. Okay, so he's constantly trying to show the sense of unity and togetherness, and by doing that rhyming couplet, he is structurally showing us that togetherness. All right, themes of the poem, uh, loss and isolation, you know, very, very straightforward, okay, he's been a long star. Melancholy, sense of thought and sadness, um, connection to the past, okay, so he feels very much connected with the poet's past uh, and how that, the, the, uh, they, their appreciation of beauty, represented by the more even the flowers, makes him feel connected, uh, makes him feel not alone in his appreciation of beauty. Okay? And search for meaning and belonging. So the poet is searching for a sense of meaning in his life and need to find purpose for which he eventually understands true his connection with the work of the rest of mankind. And just to go back to the sense of connection with the poet's past, uh, Frost very much felt isolated both from the, very, the aristocrat aristocratic poets of the time, some poets who were from very wealthy backgrounds um, and they were very highly educated. He didn't feel like he fit in with them very well because he was just not from the same background, not from the same world. But likewise, people from the more working classes where he grew up, he couldn't really connect with them either because the, his appreciation of poetry and beauty and literature was not something that they would have, uh, he felt they engaged with at the same level. Okay, so a few questions just to think about uh, as you go away from home. What is the role of the butterfly? You know, what is that, you know, does it, we've talk, talked about a number of different things that the butterfly could represent. To you, what is the role of the butterfly in this poem? Why does the poet refer to the more as a kindred spirit? Okay, and that kindred spirit, we're going to, we should be looking into that idea of the poet's past there. And do you agree with the idea that this poem is actually about Frost's work in writing poetry? Do you, so that's, you know, come up with your own opinion. You're, you're free to have opinions on poetry. You're encouraged to have opinions on poetry. You should have your own ideas and opinions. Do you see where we're coming, where I'm coming from here in talking about this poem? In connection with other poets and his own work in poetry, or do you think this is simply a more simplistic poem in him looking at the beauty of nature and appreciating the tough flowers?